Hi, this is Jack Downs with a little bit of a video to run through the banner exercise for anyone not in class, anyone wants to review. Why would you need to know this? What is this exercise about? Uh, there's very little original work in this exercise, so it's really just learning a technique um, and following along with me. Uh, the original work would be, should you choose to use this on your resume or something else? And here's the reason you might. Um, if you ch decide that you want, for instance, in this example, for your H1, your overall heading on your page, to have a special font, like a fancy script, or maybe some decorative uh, type of some kind, then you may, real then you'd realize that you can't just get that with a font stack. You probably could get it with a with, with it with a, a web font, though if you wanted something really special, you might have to pay for it. Um, in any case, otherwise, using free web fonts, you might not get exactly what you want. Uh, so you might choose to turn it into an image, and that's what we're doing here. Realizing, of course, that adding another image to the page does add yet another item that has to be downloaded and slows the page slightly. Um, but if that's worth it for you to get exactly what you want. And with an image, you get exactly what you want because you make it exactly like you want. Um, you probably, if you're going to do this for an H1, you might do a different one for the top of each page because it should probably be your name and the topic. You can see some of this done in different ways in the example websites from previous semesters that are linked on, on uh, uh, Brightspace. So those, those are from students who may, many of them did decide that they wanted something special. By the way, yes, you'll get a little extra credit if you choose to use a banner and you use it properly. But that's not really the reason to do it. The reason to do it is because you really want to get this special font and, and so on. So I'm going to make two banners um, and, and put them into two uh, web documents, two, two HTML documents, in slightly different ways. Um, and then hopefully that will give you the ideas you might you need to use to, to do your own. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, so the, um, uh, I, the instructions that I'm showing here are ones that you should have roughly, something very similar, similar anyway. The idea being that you are, you've got a, um, uh, a root folder and you're going to download two banner documents from our download files. They're called something like Banner 1 and Banner 2, and then you add your name to them, as I've already done. Good. So you download those into a root folder. There are no images to download. You have to make the images. We're going to do that in Photoshop, so you need to have Photoshop up, as I have right now also. And although there's some instructions here, really the instructions are just uh, somewhat superficial, just a general outline, and we're going to actually do it together here. Or I'll do it, and you can pause every once in a while as you do it. Um, so I have, uh, I've already downloaded those documents, and here they are, called Banner 1 Jack, Banner 2 Jack. I also have a, um, and if you want to see what these look, look like, you won't be surprised to see that they're going to be this file here, which we've done before. We use this for a lot of examples, um, and it says your name here, also in, up here in the HTML, sorry, in the head. It says banner exercise. You could add your name there, just leave that alone. But you're definitely going to add your name to the H1 in both cases. We'll get to that eventually. I'm going to add my name. You add your name. Good. To the H1 as you would normally. Good. And um, otherwise, you will see we've got a div around the header, and we're going to work with that area there. So I've got Photoshop up, and here it is. We're going to say file new. I have done this earlier, so my numbers are already in there. But these are the numbers that you want. You want to have it say, and these these are mentioned in the handout. Uh, first of all, you give it a name. Okay, good. I, I tell you, certain naming. It, you use whatever naming you want. I'm using something different here. Um, I'm going to call it uh, banner or ban one Jack for banner one, and then of course it's going to be banner two. Um, you could use whatever naming you want as long as you remember what it is. And <clears throat> the naming won't really matter until we do our save anyway. Um, so uh, 960 with pixels. Make sure it's in pixels. It's very important. Pixels. 
150 height pixels again, 72 pixels per inch for resolution, that's web resolution. Color mode is fine. Background, very important to be transparent. And the rest of the stuff we can leave alone. And we'll just say, okay. And there is our document, very banner-like shape. It was going to go on the top of a page. Um, now we're going to have to go get our text. Here's our text tool right here. Um, so we're going to click in over here and do some typing. Now take a look at what your size is and make it be a reasonable size, a reasonable big size, probably 60 or 72. But ours is 72. And what font are you going to want to do? Well, you'll be changing it probably. Um, I'm going to put it on something kind of more generic. I'll put it on Verdana to start with, which is probably the sort of thing you're at. And what color do you want? Well, your color is probably starting off at like white or black or something, right? Um, um, you can change the color later as we go. You're going to probably want something dark, probably something in a color. That would be another reason to do this. You want a color on it on your type also. And I'm going to go to something that's more, how about something orangey, dark and orangey? Ooh, that might not be a good choice, but we'll try it anyway. So why not? Yeah. And I can change those things after too, of course. I'm just going to click in here and type my name. I'm going to take it all caps. Okay. Now that's in Verdana. There is really not much reason to ever do this sort of thing, do a, a banner to do Verdana. Because you can get that font or something very close to it through a font stack. The reason to do this would be because you want something, some unusual font, something distinctive that makes sense to you and your project. So I'm going to select it and we're going to choose something else. I could choose Edwardian, which is a crazy script. I don't think so. Black Adder, um, that's a weird script. It is. Um, I might do that. Uh, Britannica Bold, Brit Britannic, Britannic Bold. I don't know, Algerian is something very different, kind of stately maybe or something. I could go to, so I don't want to do something like these. That's too weird. That's too simple. Um, I could just go through, through them all. I'm going to choose something. That's a very classic sans, uh, serif font. Um, Black Adder again. Black Oak. And you could spend a lot of time doing this. I'm going to try brush script, make it a script font, because that would make sense. That would be the sort of thing that you wouldn't normally get. Now I'm going to make it bigger. I'm going to just have to do trial and error. Your font you choose will be different. You choose what you want. You pause this now and, and spend some time with it if you want. And the sizing you use is going to be different depending on what font you choose. I'm going to go up to um, a big size, so it generally fills the area pretty well. Maybe that's like a 96 or something. That's even bigger than that. Um, it's going to be maybe, I'm going to choose um, 120. That's getting pretty big. Um, I'm going to try to use my regular selection tool and move that into position now. I think it's filling enough of the height here. I'm going to probably drag it a little bit. I can make it a little bit bigger. Click into it again. How about 140? Again, if you're using some other font, then, then, which is a different, this, is, this might be way too big a number for you. Okay. And if I want to choose a different color, I could select it and go into choose a different color. Um, and uh, so on. Uh, so I, I'd make it really big. Now I'm going to select it as I just have with the regular selection tool. And maybe it's big, but maybe it doesn't really fill the area that well. Maybe you want to do a little bit of a stretching or something. Well, Control T for transform is a way to do that. And then I'm going to grab the handles on the end. I'm just going to go stretching it to position to make it make, fill the area a little bit bigger. And really screw up the type. Type people would not be happy to see you do this. Okay. Um, good enough. I, I'm going to say I'm done. Um, you spend more time doing it. Oh, no, I could do something else. Maybe I should do a um, uh, regular selection tool, select back on it. I'm going to choose FX. I could choose some some special effect, like Bevel and Emboss or something. I like Bevel and Emboss. You could go to Drop Shadow. You could go to add some Inner Shadow to. Um, these special effects, you do not need to use any of these. You can spend a lot of time playing with these. Try different ones. Eventually, you find what you like. I found them. Did you notice? I selected the, the layer, essentially, that I'm on. 
and I went over here to the Layers panel, and went under FX. When I choose one of them, all of them come up. Okay, so um, we did that too. That was an option. So I'm going to do a Save As. I'm going to save this as a PNG. You want a PNG because there's multiple levels of transparency that you may have there, especially if you did a drop shadow. But anyway, PNG is a good choice. And I already have a couple there from doing this another time. Ignore those. You won't have anything else, any other images in your root folder. So I'm going to just go ahead and do a save there. Good. And I'm going to say, yeah, yeah, it's all fine. So I saved my PNG. Um, tell you what, let's continue along with creating the, the text training a slightly different banner now and then we'll put them in the two different documents so we did the banner number one because we can keep on going right here in photoshop why why change now imagine you want to do a gradient behind it some kind of like a color behind it um so i want to show you about using the gradient tool in photoshop because it's interesting and here it is over here now you probably will see it underneath the the paint bucket the paint bucket will probably be there so you have to hold down and choose the gradient tool it's under the paint bucket Okay, good. But we can't just do it on top of there. It'll just take that over, right? We need to make a new layer. So I'm over here in the Layers panel, or palette, and I'm going to click, click a plus to make a new one. I'm going to remove the eyeball, the eye, from the, uh, so we no longer see the text layer. I'm working on this top layer. It's the one that's selected right now. And with my text tool, well, sorry, my gradient tool selected, I'm going to click up here to the color bar area. And here's where I could set, I could actually go through these folders and choose one of these many preset ones. I'm just going to choose my own. I'm imagining I have my orange text, which is pretty dark. I want something a little lighter that's going to go along with orange. And these colors probably won't. So I'll click the starting point in my gradient and set the color at maybe something in the yellowy, a light yellow maybe. I don't know if that's going to look good, but we'll try it. I'll say okay. And then I'm going to click the other end of my gradient and choose a different color, something in the yellow. I'm going to go to reddish on the orange side of red. And I don't think so. Maybe the light blue, something like that. Okay. Whatever. Is there those good choices to go with orange? Mm, I don't know if anything goes well with orange. Probably orange was a bad, de bad decision. But anyway, here we are. You've got your own, you, you know what colors you're going to use because you've got your own color scheme. I don't really for this. So I set two ends of my gradient. I will say OK. And now with my gradient tool is still selected, if I just start to drag and uh, click and drag in here, you will see I will get a gradient. I'll just click and drag all the way across. And that's a gradient from one side to the other as shown there. But I could go top to bottom instead. I could go at an angle. I could go backwards. Whatever you want to do. And the, and the length of the line you draw shows the gradualness of the gradient. How fast it goes from one place to another. You play with this for a long time. Eventually you'll get what you want. And then I'm going to go to my regular selection tool. I'm going to re-click my type. But I can't see it because it's below. I'm going to now drag my other layer up on top. And there I am. So I'm going to save this as, um, I guess the colors don't look that bad, as save as. And now I'm going to call it band 2, Jack. Good. And put it in the same folder. Do notice, make sure you keep track of, I'm putting mine in my root folder. You're going to have to navigate to find your root folder, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I should have those two there. Band 2 is in there. Oh, no, I don't want PSD. Shoot, that was dumb. I, have to, I should delete that PSD afterwards. It's got a PNG. That's why I got that message. Yeah, yeah. That's a band two PNG. I should have two. I actually have four PNGs in there. Let's get rid of the other ones. Here's my root folder. Um, I don't want the PSD for sure. Let's get rid of that. And I don't want the, uh, the B1 and B2 because those were from some other time I did this. And I saw it. Good. So that's, you should have two images and two HTML documents. HTML documents were just supplied. And we can close this if you want now. And you can save the changes or not. Whatever. Okay. Here we are in my banner one. 
and I'm going to put the band one image in here. And you see, we'll see the place where we're going to put it. It's right here above, well, below the H1. That's fine, yeah. And I'm going to put it in the SRC. So I said BAN, oops, BAN1 jack.png, right? And I think we would say, you have to use alt text always. Jack down banner. Sure, yeah. Um, and um, let's go ahead and um, save this and run it. Okay, a few problems. First of all, it says jack downs and jack downs. We don't want that, right? And it's not centered either, right? Okay, so how do we center things? A couple of different ways we can center things. Um, and I'll show you two different ways. We'll do a different one in each one of these examples. And then we're not going to do the Flexbox way, but you should know how to do that too. We could tell, put the thing in a container, tell the container to flex, display flex, and then tell that item inside of it to center. We probably would still have to put a percentage on it up for the size, as we'll do in a second example. But it, so this will be like, now you'll know three ways to center something. Um, but we're going to use for these examples the old margin zero and auto. Um, okay. So uh, what are we going to do? We'll go back into the in here. Now, so do should we just delete this H1? No, do not. Do not delete the H1. Why not? Because we need it there for uh, SEO. Uh, it's very important. So what are we going to do? We can't have it duplicated. We'll just tell it to display none. Tell it to go away. All right. Um, now what are we going to do with this, this header area? The header area is the ID that the banner is within. Okay, good. We'll do this first thing in the header area. I'm going to tell it to give it a width of 960, which we know is how wide, how big it really is. And we'll tell it to margin of zero and auto. Auto left, right, we'll center it. So save that and run it. And there we are. It is centered and so on. But the problem, of course, is that's a hard unit. And um, we are not, and that would mean it's not very, it's not responsive. And at a certain point, a certain width of the page, it would start to cause a horizontal scroll bar and go off the screen, right? That's the problem, okay? But otherwise, it works fine. And for your resume, doing something like this would be fine because you don't have to make it responsive. Although the more things you make somewhat more responsive, the, the more, that will be a little extra credit too. Okay, um, so let's do a different way. of uh, uh, Let's use the other banner and the other file and so on. So here we are again. This time we're going to put jack downs again. In there. Or and this could be jack downs. Um, if it were for a resume page, it would be jack downs in a divider of some kind and then education or experience or whatever. Um, and then my H1, I'll just go ahead and say display none. Good. And now we're going to go into the, we're going to do something a little bit different. By not using the div, the div, but by using the ID that's directly applied to the thing, we got to put the thing in there, don't we? Alt equals you have your own name there. Um, I'm going to, by using the ID of banner, which is the ID of play, placed directly on the image, and by using a display block telling it to act like a block item as opposed to using the id the div around it which has the effect of that already that's why we're, we'll do it a slightly different way we're going to tell it to give it a width uh oops 80 percent already it's got it's 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 uh going to be responsive it's going to be flexible because we're using percentages for the width and we could have done this on the other example, yes. And we're going to call the display block. And we're going to say margin zero auto. Okay. That will, should work. Let's see what happens. There it is again. Of course, this is the other banner, the one with the gradient. Personally, I think you're probably better off just doing a transparent background and doing simple text with maybe some color on it. Um, and also maybe you want to make it smaller to begin with. Um, we only did a width. That means the height is going to go with it in proportion. Also because we used a percentage, it means when it gets smaller, it's just going to shrink down. 
like that. So that's going to be completely flexible. Um, in the real world, you maybe you put some maximum widths on it, so it doesn't go above uh, maximum width in pixels, so it doesn't go above a certain size or something like that. Um, and uh, but perhaps in the real world, instead of this, you would use a flex box. You would tell the container around the thing, the div around the thing, to have a display flex. You would tell the item to have a justify content center, and you might still give it a percentage, so it only takes up a certain percent of the area. Um, at least by making it this big, 9060, even at 80%, it would be a really big monitor for it to go much bigger than that. Um, it may seem really not getting any problems right now with it being too large. Okay, that's the end of that, uh, that exercise. Um, so um, maybe you'll want to use a banner on your site.